So amazing, guys. You held in there. We're um, at the final presentation for today. Um, our colleagues, um, Piro Karanen and Tapani Vyorinen. Sorry for massacring your names. Um, uh, colleagues that we met last spring um, in Finland, Helsinki, and uh, so appreciative we invited the men to come to a symposium that we hadn't yet constructed. Very appreciative that they're here today. Um, Piro is a designer and facilitator at Aalto University in Finland, working at the intersection of design and material sciences. She's constantly lo looking for new ways to combine design with science, technology, and business. Tapani is professor of forest products chemistry, vice dean of education, School of Chemical Engineering at Aalto. His current research focuses on the nanostructure and the react reactivity of the plant cell wall. But today, they'll be presenting together about the work that they do together. Please welcome Piero and Tabani. Thank you. Uh, maybe it's been a long and inspiring day, so, but maybe we should start by giving a big hand to this amazing team of this Healthy Materials Lab. Okay, so, um, yes, we were already introduced. So our topic is today, now we are going to look a little bit forward, and that is happening through education. What we are working with is education, so we are mainly focusing on that. And uh, we are going to talk about uh, three topics. A little bit about the background, why we are here, <laughs> and where we come from, and then about the materials itself uh, that we are working with. And then we are also, we, we jump to this, uh, we are aiming to have a small dialogue related to <laughs> design and science, because that's the thing that we keep on, we keep on talking, I think, every day since 2011, almost. Um, but first about the background where we are, where we come from. So we come from Helsinki, Aalto University. Uh, Julia Lohman already presented, she's our dear colleague. And uh, we have six schools at the university. Um, it is quite new in a way. We are now so just celebrating 10 first years of our university, but all the schools that were merged together 2010, they are already with a long tradition. So it covers, gives us also a super good backbone of uh, combining tradition, but doing new things. And uh, yeah, we are quite big, not, not too big, but still quite big in Finland uh, as a university. We have something like 12,000 students and we have about 400 professors and plenty of other faculty as well. And we are all at the same campus. Uh, what is uh, interesting in, in uh, why, why our collaboration, this Kemart collaboration was enabled is because it is embedded in the university strategy. So there is in fact both materials and design and architecture and arts combined. So it means that it, it, it gives the backbone where we can stand. Uh, but then about the chem arts itself. <laughs> so it is a, it's a collaborative activity. I, we don't know in fact how to call it. It's a little bit like ameba. It's moving a little bit, uh, changing a little bit all the time. Uh, but it's, it has three focus areas. It's, it, it has education, which is the main thing. So how to, how to Im have impact in the future through the future professionals. It's also about research, which we are not going to talk so much today. And then it's, of course, about sharing and, um, for example, this event that we are very happy to, happy to be here and have the opportunity to share our experiences. Uh, yes, maybe it's time to start the di dialogue, so maybe Tapani would like to say something. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. yeah. Is this oh, mic, mic, microphone on? No, you can Maybe. I, 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 I use this one. So, yes, yes, um, about, about this um, uh, way, 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 of, uh, way of teaching, that, that is quite unique, I, I, I think. So, so we, we are called teaching uh, uh, all the time. Uh, we, 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 have, uh, we have been doing it since uh, uh, 2012, uh, and uh, uh, I would also like to add that uh, uh, we want to create an atmosphere where, where the stu students feel comfortable, 
uh, we give the basics uh, uh, so that they can start working by the by their hands. But for, for example, we require that, uh, that, that the research questions that they want to study, that they need to figure out them by themselves. So we, we don't give them, th them the topic. So it's uh, quite demanding for, for, for the students, but, but uh, this atmosphere of trust is very important. And in uh, th this atmosphere also, I, I would say that uh, uh, we uh, co-learn, not only co-teach, but co-learn. -co -co is it now on? No. 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 Okay. All right. So uh, we keep on changing. That's very typical, by the way, in our work. So we, we keep on making mistakes all the time and failures, but we also support each other and all whole team. So it's, it's, we, are, we are used to this. Um, yeah. What was I to say? Yes, it's really about the co-learning more than <laughs> co-teaching. Well, we all the time learn. I think sometimes we learn more than the students during these educational projects. Uh, we also have a very nice lab, by the way. This chem you can see it there. It's ChemArt's lab, and it, it's in the, inside the chemical engineering, so it has been built there. It's a specific area. It's a combination of chemistry lab and an artist studio, so it's not either, and it's a little bit easier for, for our design students to work in. But let's jump to the materials that we are mainly working with. Oh, may, maybe people, people that I would like to add that we are not uh, only using this uh, ChemArts uh, laboratory, but also working, working outside. For example, last summer we had uh, camp uh, outside the university when uh, the students uh, studied uh, that how uh, like the residues from greenhouses could be used for ma ma making different kind of materials. Uh, the reason, why, 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 the main reason for ChemArts is um, it's related with these big challenges, uh, climate change that has been discussed uh, very much here, but also, also the pl plastic plastic problem. Uh, in Finland, uh, forests are the main uh, natural resource. Uh, most of the uh, surface area of uh, Finland is covered by, by forests, and uh, for, for us it, it is a natural resource. But, but uh, what I'm going, co 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 going to talk uh, more, more, more about uh, is uh, can be uh, li like uh, applied for any lignocellulose, any, any, any plant biomass. Uh, uh, one, one thing that uh, I, in my teaching, e emphasize very much as an engineer, that uh, it's important to be aware about the scales that have been discussed also here to some extent. Uh, and um, um, I, I also we require that uh, stu students must be able, a able to do the, 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 this, uh, the, these calculations also, that how important what, what, what they are working with is in, 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 in reality. Uh, we, uh, we have been using a uh, lo logarithmic scale so that we can uh, lo lo like uh, you, uh, uh, cover like very uh, wide range of uh, natural resources, uh, and so, so one unit in this scale means ten times more. And, and you can see here, like the amount of solar radiation, photosynthesis, etc. Et, et uh, it, it's uh, of course also seen that the fossil, fossil carbon use uh, is, is uh, very uh, uh, like large scale. Uh, there, there is also one bar for melting of glaciers. So this is what I have been teaching, that uh, fossil carbon, almost half of fossil carbon is uh, used for melting the glaciers. Uh, so, uh, no, of course, not di directly, but in indirectly, which is very sad. Uh, then, then uh, like we could continue uh, in this way, and. Uh, I would say that the main reason for calculating everything uh, in the same units is that it's otherwise very difficult to understand uh, about the scales. And for example, uh, like oil uh, consumption is given in barrels, uh, our, our, our nutrition values are in kilocalories, uh, and electricity in uh, kilowatt hours or w whatever, and nobody uh, can make the connection very easily. And that, that, that is one, one reason for that. 
Uh, but but uh, the, the, the his, and I think that it uh, should, would, should be important for all of us when we are working uh, with, with the challenges that we always understand that what we are doing, that how important it is. And uh, if that is not very important, may, maybe we, we should change the topic to study something else. Um, uh, it's especially the scale, I think, yeah, you are so referring. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, then um, uh, about uh, like bi bi biomass, uh, because biomass can be used for energy production, but also for making materials. And uh, with these tables, I, I just wanted to show that, that the heat value of biomass is not especially high. But, but the material properties like cellulose indicated in, in the other table, uh, it, it, it has like uh, very good uh, values uh, also in comparison with uh, like the synthetic polymers. Uh, so for me, conclusion for, from these values is that uh, bi biomass should be used especially for ma make, making materials. And uh, if it uh, jump back into the previ previous table, uh, you, you can see the, the, like the amount of synthetic uh, polymers that are pro uh, produced currently, then also the production of the chemical pulp. And uh, th these are very close to each other. So for me, it looks like uh, it's uh, fully possible to, uh, for example, find so, uh, 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 or get into a situation where, where like this synthetic uh, polymer uh, in principle could be replaced with uh, something made, made of biomass. Uh, then, uh, uh, like uh, in the chemat stitching, uh, we also did uh, designers. La, 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 like the basics uh, on, 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 on the biomass, and uh, uh, it means for, for oh, sorry, uh, for example, that, uh, uh, that what, what, what is a comp chemical composition of biomass, uh, what kind of structures it has, uh, how, how these components can be separated from each other using mechanical, chemical, biochemical, or thermochemical processes and uh, what, what, what kind of fractions of products can be obtained from here. Uh, and uh, uh, as you can see, this table is quite complex, which means that the biomass is not a uh, very easy ma material to deal, deal with. For example, the fractionation of uh, a single component from this very complex structure is uh, not easy at all. Uh, another aspect here is uh, that uh, if you look at uh, cellulose, uh, for example, that, that is uh, in, in a table, uh, like in di different places, but uh, it can be a physical structure, uh, uh, or you can use biomass a, a, as, as a solid material. Uh, you, you, you can isolate the fibers, cellulose fibers, you, you, you use the fibers, the fibers can be disintegrated to make uh, nanocellulose, for example, uh, or fibrillar cellulose in, in different forms. It's possible to make uh, cell, uh, water-soluble cellulose derivatives, use those. It's possible to make uh, uh, derivatives that are soluble in organic solvents uh, that can be melted, etc. So, so when, when we talk about using cellulose, uh, one should be able to uh, like know uh, like all of these possibilities that cellulose can, can offer. Yeah, and of course it's everywhere. It's in all plants and, and, and algae, and it's not only in trees, yeah, which yeah. is usually thought. So, do you want to have this one? Okay. I have now two of these working okay. ones. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I have them. So. May, 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 maybe uh, I, I will continue still uh, the, the, this slide that. Uh, uh, as you can understand from, from a previous table, that uh, it, it's um, actu actually, uh, in order to, be, to make uh, everything, you need to know quite, quite much. Uh, and then also that is same in, in this uh, research. If you want to uh, do something applied research to get some materials, so th there's a huge amount of knowledge beh behind. And uh, without this knowledge, uh, it's not really, it's very difficult to accomplish much. 
So, and if you want to know more of this or see this, there are these nice uh, VTT Technical Research Center of Finland samples in the exhibition. So there you can see some, some of these cellulose-based materials. But let's jump to the uh, discussion what we were aiming to have with here. So it was about the approaches, because we've been now practicing this collaboration since a couple of years, and it's really, it is, it has already been mentioned, it's about communication, but it's also about other things like respect, for example, and trust. But um, what would you say about this nanocellulose? You mentioned already it. Y yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, let, let's, uh, I, I, I would uh, start about, about uh, I'm, I'm, I think that there are not so many like uh, people here who make uh, scientific research on materials. So, uh, in 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 science, uh, uh, there are, there are some principles that are really good. For example, that when you do something, you 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 must know about what has been done before. That is a requirement. So so you cannot do a science without knowing what others have done earlier. And it, it's big work to figure out that. that. And, and another very good principle is that uh, when you do something, you need to, uh, like, uh, uh, and, and you report that uh, you need to uh, describe uh, in detail that what you have been doing so that anyone else can repeat that. And that, that, that is good. Okay, then coming to this nanocellulose, uh, and the tail that you can see here on, on the left hand side uh, contains about 97-98% uh, water. Uh, so the dry matter content is only 2 to 3%. And uh, as, as designers, you under, un, understand that if you want to make some uh, solid material by drying that, it, it, it's quite challenging. So when, when, you, when you remove, like, uh, 97, 98% of the material, and uh, uh, the, uh, it's, in, in science, uh, I would say that it is um, seen so that uh, because scientists want, want to uh, like report numbers, for example, they want to make samples uh, that from where they can measure the strength or something, uh, so, so th this is quite challenging material to handle. Yeah, but it's interesting, like, like Tapani told me, that there, there are maybe tens of thousands of articles written on nano, different kinds of nanocellulose and microcellulose. When I, when I confronted nanocellulose ten, uh, something like eight years ago, I had never heard of it before. But, so that's also something that in one discipline you might know something, but that might not be known in the next discipline. So it's really about the, the discussion and collaboration. And, and then what, what happened with this nanocellulose thing, for example, just, well, well, students started to, design students started to work with the material as they have been used to. Just experimenting, testing, trying, and not listening too much of these challenges that there is too much water and it takes too much energy to dry and so on, which is, of course, there. But I mean, it's still through this um, very handsome thing that is, this started. This is an, another example of, of uh, what, what, what might happen with a, when, when nanocellulose tries. Because there's another thing that we've been discussing a lot with difference, for example, in this case. So you can maybe... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I, I actually don't know what you mean, but... Uh, <laughs> no, the, the I, I flat. I mean the flat, uh, flat yeah, and... Yeah. Uh, Maybe, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, <laughs> scientists want to have like this flat materials because they are easier to measure. <laughs> and anything that, that goes into 3D, it, it, it's some kind of uh, uh, like uh, fault in, in, in a material mm. that we would li 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 like to avoid. So this is a nice example because that's also because what designers have been, we, students and, and our colleagues have been doing, just letting things dry and seeing what happens when these uh, materials dry and, and, and what kind of shapes are coming. So there is, for example, quite interesting experiment with a, with a PLA printed flat and then covered with a microfibrillated, nano, um, microfibrillated cellulose and, and let, let it dry. So it becomes like a very like a living thing almost like like something biological but it's only it's on the right side so it's it's a question of controlling not controlling the material and seeing what will happen it's different approach i think what we yes, have yes. <laughs>
Another interesting thing here is just this is about partially dissolved uh, cellulose uh, the fabrics. And it's, it's something that I have been listening to my colleague for a couple of years from, from the chemical engineering, that they are working with a new technology called all cellulose composites. But I didn't understand it. I only understand, understood it this summer when I saw some samples they had made with a knits. They had, it's, an, it's an idea that you can dissolve the material partially and then you kind of a, you press it and the process, the process finishes. And it means that it's still monomaterial, but you can have soft parts and flexible parts and then hard parts. It's really early stage, but it's also an example to, to things that they are not easy to understand unless I'm as a designer, unless I see things, unless I touch things. And then suddenly my brain starts to work. It's kind of a discovery every time. Maybe we can talk some words of this. Um, in fact, we, we have been talking today about designers being generalists, which is a great thing, and I agree. I, I'm, I'm definitely myself, I have become a facilitator and bridge builder, but we've been talking a lot why, why it has been possible to set up this Kmart's collaboration about this. Y yes, mm. yeah, yeah, yes, and the, uh, maybe at the, 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 this point, uh, I, uh, I maybe take, uh, we just have some slides, so they are not so important. But, but uh, uh, like, uh, uh, as somebody said uh, earlier today, that uh, when, when uh, if, if I would li 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 like, to, I, I need to teach chemistry, for example, about, about, uh, about the biomaterials to design students who are lacking, maybe, maybe the earlier knowledge on, on that topic, I need to simplify very much. Li like uh, li last summer, I, 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 I was talking about, uh, about the biomass, and then suddenly uh, one, one design student asked, that, what, what, what is a polymer? And it was a surprising question to me because I, I assume that everyone knows that what, what, what is a polymer. Uh, and then, then, then I have, haven't time to discuss about, tell about that, how, how it went, but uh, I, I need to, needed to explain it in a way that they, they understood it, the concept. Uh, and uh, well, uh, among the colleagues, uh, it, it means that uh, they, they may consider that uh, they, they, they may question my teaching because it goes at so, in a way, low level. It's like daycare teaching or something. <laughs> uh, and uh, among the colleagues, chemistry is a very, very serious thing. And uh, it uh, so, should be, uh, of course, handled at a very high, high level. But uh, I mean, it, uh, uh, in order to be able to collaborate in this way, it, it requires that I'm very confident about my own knowledge on my own speciality. If I, I'm, uh, I'm not confident about that, uh, I'm not able to do this. Yeah, and I, I, I don't want our design students to become chemists. They sometimes want to because they fall in love with the chemistry and they have the white coat. It has been mentioned here already today. So they just love it for a while. But what's the point? Because there are people like Tapani and his colleagues who are really deep on that knowledge. Why should I try to? I, I, I need to understand on a conceptual level but I don't need to become a chemist to be able to collaborate. That's, I think, the, the main message that we try to, to also tell. Yeah, it's also a ex super interesting example. Um, we've been talking quite a lot now about this um, cellulose as such, and kind of a chemically processed materials made of wood, but of course wood can be used also as it is used as wood, as solid wood. This is also a super beautiful example of solid wood. Um, again, kind of a monomaterial. It's a shimmering wood. It's, it's uh, coated with uh, cellulose nanocrystals, 
Did I say it correctly? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I... I'm always worried <laughs> well, with these words. Uh, um, and uh, for example, in this case, uh, in, in this case, uh, this was not uh, among like this normal Kemal students, but uh, uh, researchers who did uh, the, 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 this work. And uh, the, the, there's uh, much uh, theoretical work behind that, and uh, it, it's coming uh, from, from this uh, deep scientific knowledge. Yeah, it's but, a beautiful example how it has been the, the co collaboration. Yeah. What happens when? Uh, but but uh, I, no. 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 Wrong no, direction. No. no. Okay. No, 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 I don't no, no, touch. No. I don't touch. Uh, so <laughs> I, I I just uh, w w want to say that uh, 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 still uh, li like this uh, design students who are lacking the deep knowledge uh, they they can make d discoveries that are also scientifically important uh, and uh, the reason for that is that uh, scientists. Uh, uh, try to avoid areas where, where, they, uh, where they think that, uh, that that is not interesting. But, but, but the, the, these are students who, who, who don't uh, know about that. They, they do everything and uh, uh, they, they, they often are able to make some discoveries that are actually very important also, also scientifically. So in that way, uh, even though this uh, uh, deep knowledge on own area is uh, important uh, also also like this collaboration can be bring, uh, it, it it can feed also uh, these excellences yeah that's definitely and that is an also a very nice example here in fact what is coming what we can possibly in the future get from the trees or plants this is an example of uv uv protection directly from Stru spruce park and it's, it was also a collaboration between two students with, uh, with from arts and and chem, yeah. and they for for one summer project. Another is an exa a super interesting example of already some things that can go towards business. This uh, Havu Cosmetics, it's kind of a wooden lipstick uh, package, which is also with natural cosmetics. Really nice thing. Uh, it's time almost to conclude our things. Uh, maybe some words of this. Uh, the textiles have been mentioned here already a couple of times and, and the need to replace polyesters and need to replace maybe part of the cotton and how to reclise, reclise, recycle all those things. So uh, that's definitely, well, yeah, that's one of the technologies. Uh, in, seven, in, in Finland, we have now about seven technologies how to produce textile fibers out of something, mainly out of... Uh, um, paper, cardboard, cotton, uh, wood. So there are different kinds of uh, concepts, and uh, some of them are almost commercial. One thing that we are we are now working at the other university is this iron cell thing. It's it's well, all, many of you have lyocell on you or viscose, which are also, of course uh, already made one from wood. But the new developments are that they are really targeting to have more sustainable production processes and to have materials that can be recycled. Because that's something that we definitely, it has been already mentioned several times today, this circular economy that we are definitely definitely moving into. Would you like to say something of the, not, not of the circular economy? No, uh, no, 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 maybe okay. not. There are, there are more, more important things. Yeah, okay, yeah. all right. Uh, I, I, yeah, circular economy is really important, but, but uh, <laughs> be, because we are running out it of has the, been discussed, yeah, yeah it, we are running out of the time, uh, so we, we we have been thinking about that. Uh, what, what, what has been needed to make uh, this chemarts uh, collaboration uh, so uh, so uh, successful? So how, how be you? Yeah, it's really about this openness and willingness. If there is no willingness, nothing happens. So it is really about the individuals having willingness to do something, because if you have, if you have willingness, you, are, you, are, you want to understand what others are saying, so we come to this communication. Uh, yeah, then we have to have a shared vision, what to do. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that is needed, of course, and uh, that, that, that we have had. But um, then uh, also, also like the support from a university is uh, very, very important. Uh, uh, trust, uh, me meaning that uh, 
uh, the, who are above us, they, they trust on what we are doing, they are not controlling, but they trust on us because we are working on an area that uh, not m many others have wor worked no, earlier. No, it can't be. We can't get these all these uh, numbers and uh, <laughs> endless rows uh, analysis. So we, are, we have been quite free to, to develop this thing, which has been the key behind this collaboration. And we are not afraid of... Uh, we have been both jumping to, to kind of a dark hole when we started this. So it means that we are not afraid of failures either, I think. No, 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 <laughs> we are not. <laughs> Uh, they are happening anyway. <laughs> anyhow, yeah. Yeah, then we have this. But that's the, also about the sharing. So it's really about the, the, one of the things we are now working with is the Kemar's cookbook. So it's really about cooking, and it was also mentioned today. So this will be out maybe next uh, March, hopefully. We are still working on it. So sharing the knowledge and recipes, very ta ta practical recipes that we are, we have. And hopefully maybe you all, we also have some kind of a material kit. Or, we although we are already a few seconds o over time. Uh, so, so <laughs> That's I, Finnish I, engineer. I, no, no. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, I, I want to say something about this cookbook because I, I think that it's really important. I, I, I have a vision. Uh, and it's good that Maya is here, also young, 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 young lady uh, in, in the audience. But uh, l like uh, that, uh, uh, what we are, we have been doing, it, it's not uh, only, only something for for the university people and students, but, but for everyone. So 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 that and we we have been collaborating with uh, secondary schools also, but. Uh, I have small a, kids as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have a vision that uh, in the future families also work together in the kitchens and study these uh, biomaterials. Because I, I, I think that there, there's a great innovation potential um, among the people who are also lacking, la lacking the hi higher education. Okay, so it has been talk about the future, hopefully. Hopefully you get some inspiration out of that. And uh, definitely when I was asking people on Monday from John, Sarah and Alison what, what they would like us to, how would they would like us to conclude? And they said, by giving hope. And I think it's by educating these future professionals and young people, that's really, and giving them tools to act, ways to do things and connect with materials and nature. So I think that's what we are really trying to do. Yeah, yes, there, there is uh, certainly hope, but uh, uh, I, I think that uh, uh, we who want to work uh, on, 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 on these uh, difficult questions regarding the climate change and uh, plastic uh, uh, problem and, and so on, we also need to work for that. Uh, me, meaning that we need to understand what, what is the importance of what we are doing. Uh, we, uh, and we, we need to study like the background, uh, uh, like uh, somehow get the knowledge, background knowledge that is needing uh, to solve the, 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 these questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Piro and Tapani, for ending us with a little bit of hope, for showing us what collaboration can look like. It's pretty incredible. We, we saw their laboratory, and it's pretty amazing how science and design are working together. It's, it's quite extraordinary. Thank you all for coming. It feels like we're just sitting there thinking, you know what, this is an entire semester in 24 hours. <laughs> I think we, maybe we should get credit for this. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so thank you all to all the speakers who've come here from all over the world. We really did want to show your perspectives because we think, you know, we so often get mired in the New York perspective or in, even in the, the perspective of the United States. And we really wanted to show or see or listen to these perspectives from, from all over the globe. And I'm sure there's, there's many more to hear from. And I'm, I'm, there's many more of you in the audience who have come. We hope to share um, your perspectives together um, as we have another glass of wine. Um, but we, we really have a, a bunch of thank yous um, to, to express. 
So thank you to all the speakers that presented today. They've given us a lot to think about. Um, and I think from here on in, it feels like a moment in time, right? A, a moment in time, there's a line in the sand, and it feels from here on in that um, definitely we will think about our work differently. So we have all of you to thank for that. We asked this question, what does radical change mm. look like? And all day we were taking notes about that. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty extraordinary. I, I didn't think, I, I don't know if we thought that- We'd get answers? Yeah, yeah no. we would even get an answer. <laughs> So yeah. thank you especially to our team, sorry for all the thank, you, thank yous, but for our team at Healthy Materials Lab, you've seen them around with their yellow dots doing all this work to get to this point in time was incredible. They always give their all to us, they are the lab, they are us, we are them, um, an incredibly collaborative, courageous, intelligent group of people. To Ava, to Abby on the road across the country, to Eve, to Leila, to Catherine, Burgess, Ali, Addy, Jack in the library, and all of the other volunteers, the research assistants who've helped us today. Thank you. Thank you very so much. much yeah. Thank you. And thanks to our partnering institutions. Thank you to Alto University for sending us some of your best. <laughs> Thank you to the Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian Museum, who've also brought us all these amazing ideas. To Danish Clean Tech Hub, who's brought some of our speakers here tonight and showed us what the Danes can do. And to the Finnish Cultural Institute, who um, I, we're thinking a lot of Scandinavian countries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and thank you to our, is that you good with that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and thank you to our exhibitors, especially Anastasia oh. Ivanova. Do we do that? Yeah. Who's from VTT, also part of um, Alto University. Um, really appreciate her exhibition. If you haven't seen it up the front, um, amazing. We saw that part of that exhibition when we were visiting last spring. Really amazing. Um, series of objects really make you think about, you know, what happens to materials at end of life. Also to Ant Studio, to Biomason, to sustainable, the Sustainable Systems Group, um, Derek um, Hafter and Olive. Kelhammer, Hel mm -hmm. um, who did the mycelium um, head dress and, form, and yeah. dress form. And to Jack's Transparency Corner, thank you to the library, to the whole library, and all the research assistants who are there. Yeah. Um, and to our sponsors, you know, it, it's really, it meant a lot to us, not only to have all of the 900 plus RSVPs to this symposium, um, but also that major media for design and architecture were our media sponsors, to the Architects newspaper and to Dizine, um, who've, who've been our media sponsors for this symposium, as well as um, to Wolfler Estates and Widow Jane, who are supplying us with our celebratory cocktails tonight. And we couldn't do any of this and make it open to everyone, which is kind of fundamentally the way we work, that we want to open source and share everything we know, everything you know, and that's the only way um, that we can make change in the face of such crises without the funding from the JPB Foundation. So we're eternally grateful for yeah. them for funding the lab. Yeah. yeah, And of course, to our hosts, the New School University and to Parsons School of Design, who continue to host um, us and all of our students and faculty in this spirit of radical change. So um, we are we are going to conclude. I, I just have to you have um, little quote. Just wanted to read this little quote, which mm. actually, as we were preparing this conference, my mother sent me this quote. Um, it's from May Beale, and it just seemed applicable. The quote is: um, "The only tools capable of building healthy systems." must be birthed from nuanced understanding, interdependent relationship, multi-generational sight, and an ever-deepening respect for each other, for our world, and for the mysteries we've yet to uncover. So I feel like we touched on a lot of those things today, and um, we're so grateful for all of the points that everybody brought up today that have us um, yeah, radically changing the way we can think about the future. And, and about how we can make change faster. So now, so one of the other things that we think are really important, so we can hear about things, uh, we can look at things, we can touch the seaweed and understand what it feels like, we can have a visceral understanding of things. 
But we also believe that to really make change, you need some kind of experience that moves you that's physical and immediate. And so... And immersive. And immersive, yeah. So... Um, multi-sensorial. Right. Right. Multi-sensorial. Mm -hmm. And imbibing. Mm -hmm. And embodied. <laughs> yeah. So as a, a conclusion to today, um, we've also been planning for many months um, a, a, a workshop that is culminating in today. And that this is using, you know, textiles has been mentioned many times today because textiles really starts from a fiber. And that fiber is inherently important in all the work that we do. And so we've invited the MFA um, textile design students. The, the, the program actually just started at Parsons last year. So um, this is the first second year, the second year group. These are first year students in the, in the MFA textile student um, program who've been invited to make an immersive installation as a site for the uh, reception for tonight. So they've been working away, they've been planning for weeks, months. Um, we have to thank the, those students, their faculty, their director, Preeti Gopinath, their dean, Lidawaj um, Edelcourt, um, to the faculty lead, Helen Quinn, to a chef, Marina Velasquez, um, who have all been preparing with local farms, um, local vineyards, local distilleries. They have um, the kind of concept is the gleaner's buffet. To glean is to pick up the things that were left behind by the scavengers. Oh, by At the, the end of the harvest, after the harvest, there are still things left in the field, and the gleaners would come through and collect whatever they could find in the field. So we're, um, they've been working with um, materials that have been diverted from the landfill, all upcycling. They've been weaving. They've been creating. We're about to see what that is. We also have a, the New School for Jazz um, has provided us with a, a musician. So we're going to have a great celebration tonight. And it's being held downstairs in Martha Graham's original dance studio. So there's a lot of magic to conclude this symposium. That's all to say thank you to everybody for coming. Thank you to all of these um, fantastic students for developing this. We, um, we, uh, they've asked us to invite our speakers, our honored guests, to enter the um, installation and the reception first, and that we all will enter 10 minutes later. So um, if our speakers would like to go downstairs um, and begin the celebration, we would be honored. And then we'll invite everybody else to follow in about, yeah, 10 minutes. 10 minutes, yeah. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you for this extraordinary time.